Hello, and welcome back to Zim Explorer. I am Dr. Abstract. In this Zim Explorer, we're going to continue looking at custom classes, and it's a continuation to the last Zim Explorer where we started looking at custom classes. So you'll want to go to that so that you know what we're talking about when we look at this. <laughs> Ay, 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 ay. <laughs> right, so we were talking about, uh, well, we were creating a poly class, and we had already created this poly class right here, just created it, it's for the new Zim, so we wanted to take you through custom classes and talk about some of the features that we have in Zim to, to make that happen. And we made our custom class back over here. Oh, no, that's the poly one in custom classes. And we'll post up this custom classes HTML file at zimjs.com slash explore. And then zimjs.com slash explore slash custom classes. So that will be posted there for you, uh, along with a whole bunch of other things. Hundreds of other examples are there as well. So we're in Zim. We've been using the latest version of Zim, which we'll be launching soon. Uh, most of the things should be available in the Zim 10.9 uh, version of Zim as well. We made our poly class, just a quick overview here. We made a poly class here. This is ES5. And we were collecting some parameters there. We didn't collect them all. Well, we collected them all, but we didn't adjust them all. There's a few others in there. And we make a shape in there that was put into, um, well, I guess it's a method. We don't actually use it from the outside, but it was put in there because there's a new thing coming up with the Zim shapes uh, that's called custom shape. And you can extend that in the custom shape. We'll call this make shape. And what else? Uh, we set up a radius getter and setter and a an, uh, color getter and setter. Saw how all that worked. And that's what we did in the last Explore. So in this Explore, we're going to take a look at some of the extra features that Zim uses with its custom classes that you may also be able to use if you so desire. Sound good? And that's coming from the docs here. Did we see the poly yet? Okay, let's go take a look at it. And there uh, missing a formal parameter, so what do we do? Gosh, what a great way to start. Uh, what do we do in the last explore that caused this to happen, huh? Uh, I think it was up here in the if zot color, color equals gray. Do we even save this thing? How about we do um, new poly, where the heck are we? Oh, uh, right. That's um, probably it. Okay, let's go take a look here. Refresh. Invalid property ID on 87. Get radian. What have we done? Oh, we've got the ES6 active. Okay. So, um, good. Okay. <laughs> Maybe we might want to check that. We may have uh, messed up on our, <laughs> our radius or on our getter setter methods, however that works. Uh, <laughs> Is it just get and then we say function radius? Uh, anyway, whatever. You'll you'll have to look that up. The ES6. I don't do that too too much. Okay, there there we're back to working. Alrighty, wonderful. Uh, yes, a good point. ES6. So we had gone along as well in the last version, and we're comparing uh, briefly to extending or or doing a class in ES6 and. It's no big deal, you guys. So doing this versus doing what we had earlier. I mean, obviously this looks like more now because we've added stuff to it. But as we started off there, we showed you the differences and went through the differences. You're welcome to use ES6. ES6 might not work with some of the things that we're going to show you now, and we'll bring that up as we get to them. Okay. All right. Good. Let's uh, talk about that. Now, one of the neat things is Zim Duo, so that rather than, uh, like, say we great set the radius, but we don't, we want to use the defaults for all these, or maybe the defaults for all these, and we just want to get right to the color. So in Zim, here's how we would do that. Let's hide this ES6 stuff. In Zim, there it is. Let's copy this line, comment that out. A new poly. So we could pass in, uh, talked about this too, we could pass in null, 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 
and there might be more depending on where we're trying to get to. And then we would want these things to use the default values. And these days in ES6, uh, they've decided that that should be undefined, undefined, undefined. Which is a little bit of a pain, but so be it. Undefined. It's probably some, I mean, they're probably right. <laughs> <laughs> One would hope I thought about the undefined and null more than the average person, I'm sure. But uh, anyway, it's a bit annoying. So undefined, undefined, undefined is how we would do it in ES6. I refuse to do it. Well, I would have to do it if I were working with ES6. Um, and as mentioned, we do. So we're uh, Zim works fine with ES6. Not a problem at all. And We've been using ES6 for a couple of years now uh, uh, on our latest apps and out in CodePen, etc. You might want to, if you're launching it to the public, make sure you pass it through something like Babel so that, uh, you know, or a transpiler of some sort, so it transpiles back to ES5. And that's no problem as well. Zim works great with that. We've got like 100 CodePen examples that are all transpiled that you can take a peek at if you want. Okay, so, uh, but for now I'm using nulls in there. And finally we get to our color. Well, that's a bit annoying, especially if that gets to be longer. So alternatively, we might want something like, and I'm assuming we don't want those either. We might want something like this. Var poly is equal to a new poly. Should just copy this. And then we put the squiggly brackets and we put color equal and blue. Okay, so does that sound familiar? And we dot center that. And we want to make that work as well. Okay, so not just this version, but the what we call the Zim Duo technique of passing in the configuration object as a single parameter. Nice, huh? So how do we do that in, in ours up here? Well, first of all, we might want to set up a few defaults for these other guys. If we want to get to color, we'll just go to color. So radius has a default. There's color. Let's organize this a little bit. Uh, radius is there. We'll do something for sides and point sides as well. Sides and point size. And this one's called sides. Sides, sides, sides. Uh, sides and point size, point size, point size, Ooh, missed, 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 missed. Uh, will that work? There we go. Point size. What is the default point size? Zero and the default size, <laughs> 100. <laughs> okay, we'll make that five. All right, then down in here where we use those things, uh, that dot underscore sides and point size. Is that it? I think so. And we might want to make these guys for those as well. Now, the reason why we're using all that, that dot underscore stuff is because there's a bunch of these guys inside of a super class up above. And for us to access the things in here, we could access them if they're on the object, and we can't access them if they're local properties to here. So we've stored them as, as uh, uh, properties on the object, and we're accessing them from outside. That's why we went into this stuff. The reason why we're using that is because we're not using this. <laughs> so we just made the adjustment there. It makes it a little bit easier if you're working with um, local functions to just use that down below. All right, great. We've got our defaults then, but that's not going to help us. We, uh, we can't just jump to the squiggly brackets and expect this to work, but there is a way. Let's put it in place and it's called the Zim Duo technique. So I'm gonna copy this or nope. And you can do this too and come back in here, and that happens before the constructor, so right here. So var duo is equal to this stuff. It uses zob, which stands for um, object, a Zim's object, a way of passing in an object. The name of it is just poly right here. So, and the arguments are great. Those are the arguments. The signature, no signature. 
And is this a class? So if there's no signature, you can put in null here. I'll tell you what a signature is in just a second. And then we pass in this if we're using Zob or using Duo on a class, because you can also use Duo on methods or functions. So you can set up functions that also can receive a, a, um, a configuration object. And if that's the case, you don't have to pass in this. So this is only if uh, we're making a class. And that's it. So now you can use the Zim Duo technique as well on this. Now that looks is you know it's not too bad. It's a all the, yeah, it's a little strange looking, I suppose, but we just copy it. However, the code to do that, I want to take a look at it. I'll find, I don't know how to get to this duo. Duo is equal to maybe, that's 122 of them. Do I have a Zim duo? I don't think I do. No, so let's see, how do I find Zim duo easily? Um, you, those are wrapped. I usually never have to look at them. But we'll go to the docs. We'll type in duo. No, <laughs> that's why I can find it. Uh, Zob, I, I mean. Um, so here's Zob, and it tells you a little bit about it and how to use it in a function. So there's how to use it in a function. So you just passed in the test and the arguments, and that's it. Function test arguments. Can you see that? What we were wanting to show you was what that abstracts. So it, it looks relatively simple from here, but this is what it looks like inside of, of Zim. I don't know what is the best way to look at it. Oh dear. Function prototype is prototype scope function bind apply function null concat function apply <laughs> so it's kind of like uh yeah no thanks so i mean it's not too much but it's uh compacted a little bit <laughs> function two string dot splits so we're actually splitting the function call name and grabbing the parameter names from the function call. This is doesn't quite work with class because you gotta make the bloody constructor. So it's it just it doesn't work. It's too late. We can't have it both ways. We can't operate inside and know what's on the outside. Whereas with the current ES or well current with the ES5 way, <laughs> my current thinking <laughs> with ES5 way. <laughs> I could handle that. <laughs> so it's, you know, it's too bad because this is a wonderful, wonderful functionality. But anyway, yeah. Okay, back to it we go. And where is back to it? Here it is. So what is this uh, signature thing? Well, the problem is if you minify it, so if we minified this code right here, these parameter names would get minified and no longer would the Zim Duo te technique work. So for minified, we var sig is equal to, so we pass in the sig here like that, and we collect these guys and put them in as a string. So this string will not get minified, and therefore uh, this will work again. So there you go. So there's Zim Duo that will work with minified code. Which one do you want to store? I mean, you guys go get that. I'm just no, it looks less if we just do it this way. <laughs> all right, let's see if it works, huh? Shall we see if it works? Uh, all this talk, uh, does it work? And what did we do down below here? So down below, we're making our new poly. We're passing in an object literal where, let's see, what color shall we make it? How about, um, <laughs> does it say yellow? Is the background yellow? I don't think it is. We're gonna make it yellow. Okay, let's have a look. That background's yellow, that background's yellow, but this background is gray and refresh here. And there we go, a yellow polygon with no border. How would we do the border? Well, uh, we don't have to worry too much about it. Can it do the border already? Do we have a default border? I, I guess it can do the border already. Border, color. 
Now, uh, that's another matter. How does it handle the border? So right now, it's just passing in. It's got a border color and a border width. But if these are null, I guess nothing's happening. So we found that borders are actually kind of tricky because you might specify a color and then you got to make sure that there's a width. Or you might specify a width and then you got to make sure there's a color. Uh, or something like that. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm not sure what we'll, if we specify both, it will work no problem. So let's try specifying both. <clears throat> Otherwise, we'll have to put some conditionals in there for that. So border color, red, border width, five. Okay, so there's the Zim Duo technique for that. And we refresh. And I can't tell. It doesn't look like that worked very well. <laughs> Let's see why not. So we passed in a border color, border width. What have we got here? Border. Maybe I got these mixed up. Let's try switching them. Control uh, T. No, no. Control T. There we go. Okay, so those are switched. And let's see if that was all the way. Yeah, okay, that's all it was. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. My apologies for, for that. Oh, dear. That's what was going on. It was weird. I guess the stroke is... I usually put this first, and I was getting mixed up with my names of these things because I had put them in the wrong order like that. So that is your stroke color, and this is your stroke style, which is the size of it, or that's what CreateJS has decided. Oopsies. Hee hee. Ha ha. Ho ho. Hee hee. Ha ha. Mm hmm. Uh, good. All right. Well, that worked. Now, I had mentioned a while back that I wanted that rotated. Dot rotate. Uh, well, okay. We could dot rot, but um, usually internally, I like to as much as possible. Like dot rot is a chainable method for rotation rather than use the chainable methods in here, although I have used some uh, .add2 as a chainable method. I tend, tended to, in Zim, use um, raw create.js stuff as much as possible inside. And then after a while, I started giving up on that just because it's so convenient to use Zim. So most of the time inside as well, I use things like a .rot in there. Because you see, I have to, otherwise I have to drop out of here and go dot shape dot rotation equals negative uh, 90 like that when I could have just dot rot negative 90 like so faster easier no big deal I suppose the dot rot is really just one line of code anyway that you're adding so it's no big deal all right shape rotation negative 90 let's see what it looks like now when we check it out right now it's flat on this side pointing zero positive there and we refresh now we get the sort of more familiar uh, orientation of it how does that work for a triangle <clears throat> <laughs> uh, sides three and we refresh here yeah an upright standing triangle that also is usually more familiar although it's not always the most convenient because now if you've got a go next like the go next triangle is quite often used now your triangle you got to rotate the go next triangle but we did make our triangle facing this way and I kind of would have expect, you know, I kind of expected. Do you want to see a triangle? This is what you expect. You don't usually expect when you get a triangle to see this. Okay, what else uh, is going on inside of Zim that we might make some use of? Oh, yeah, what is all this stuff, huh? Okay. Fit right here, I suppose. Probably, well, a type 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 would be interesting. That, that's that's nice and easy. Type poly. So you're welcome to make use of that. I think it's a good idea in your custom class if you give it a type in here. Uh, I don't know if we have access to this before the constructor. So I'll do that after the constructor. This dot. Um, 
type is equal to, well, this happens to be poly. Okay, <laughs> don't even have to think about it. Hey, that was easy. Okay, so you would put the name there, and that way you could ask later what, what type of object all of the Zim objects have. The Basically, the name of their class is, is the type. I wonder if you can, you might be able to grab a class name JavaScript parameter, but I don't know if that always works, so we just hard-coded it in there. Now, these things right here are, are styles. So Zim has a way to set styles, and you might want to do that. Let's just see what happens if we try setting a style to our custom poly. If we can find it. So there it is. Imagine that we would say um, all objects. So uh, style is equal to and color red, like so. And we'll get rid of the color being yellow there. So save that up and let's see what color we get. We're missing a squiggly bracket somewhere. Do we see where that somewhere was? I forgot to look. Uh, 112. Right, it takes a touch sometimes to get back into Zim if you've been using CSS. It doesn't take too long though. There we go, and we save here, refresh. Um, there's our color gray, so that's the default color. It is not red. So how could we get that set up? If we use ours, which is a Zim poly, I can't remember if we've got the same stuff. Now, ours is poly as well. It's just we've overwritten the poly by putting our own poly in here. But this will go back to the Zim poly. And we refresh this. And we've got uh, other things that are different. That's a triangle. Great. So we get our red. What other things happen here? Oh, the Zim polygon has different default settings than our polygon. Our polygon we set to... Uh, a bigger radius, I think. Yeah, this has a radius of 100. The Zim polygon's default radius is 50. Okay, but you saw that the red got applied there. All right, so this is using the Zim polygon, and there is the red. The tip of our polygon is broken, too. What am I um, so, how would we get styles to work? I haven't tried this in out like custom classes outside of Zim. I think it'll work, but let, let's try her out here. We'll go back not to the Zim poly, to poly. Now, once again, if, if we didn't have our own poly defined right here, overwriting the Zim poly, then we wouldn't need to put the word Zim in front of poly <laughs> to access the Zim poly. Get it? All right, so anyway, uh, here's poly, and we're trying to get the styles to work. So let's have a look at what's here in the styles. Here's what you have to do to get the styles to work. I don't think you need to have the group and inherit, uh, although you probably want to. That would allow you to uh, apply styles to a certain group of things, much like classes in CSS. So we may as well collect these guys right here as well. Style allows you to overwrite any styles so that uh, if you pass in false there, that means this shape will not receive any styles. If you type in true there, then it will. Or I mean, I think you can even pass in styles there if you want, but that doesn't make too much sense because all this stuff is um, already just like your styles. So I'm grabbing those three parameters there from the end. Inherit deals with inheriting styles from uh, parents and stuff or something like that and there there they go all right step two then we're going to go and grab uh, this stuff right here and paste it in here under our type poly so this dot group is whatever we passed in as the group uh, var ds 
if uh, style is equal to false, right? Okay, so this is uh, that style parameter. If it's equal to false, then we're going to pass in nothing. Otherwise, we're um, going to get style. So based on the type, so we've got the type based on the group and based on our inherit. That's fine. Now, that's not all. There's uh, something else we need to do. Two other things. One, we need to grab our stuff like this. And we'll talk about this after. So here's size. Oh, we've already been, we're using a couple of these. Anyway, well, what else should I? Uh, these ones should be harmless. So we're going to replace what we had before. For the radius, the sides, the point size, and the colors we replace, well, we'll keep it here. We'll comment out this eventually. So radius, sides, point size, I want the color as well. And the color is down here. Copy. And paste. And we'll take a look at what all this... Unfortunately, yeah, all this made Zim look a little bit more complicated than it actually is. But it gives us styles, <laughs> you know, just this extra thing and each one allows us to um, make something and receive information from styles rather than from the parameters. And so it was uh, worth it in the end for sure, for sure. All right, we've done radius, size, point, size, and color. Radius, size, point, size, and color. And we'll comment these guys out then. That means we're now operating with the 50 default. We could have bumped that to 100, I suppose. Yeah. Okay, so bumping it to 100, 5, and 0. And what's our default color here is, see, here we go again, like if a border width, then that was the thing. If you want to make something that doesn't have a fill, then how we operated was if you give it a border color or a border width but not a fill then don't set the default fill because they probably wanted just something with a border and so that was the complexities there here we won't bother we'll just make it black or gray i think we had it gray all right uh what does this mean then these things now this is a second batch thing here so this is the first batch well maybe the parameters are the first batch here's the second <laughs> you want to call it that here's the third and the fourth thing there's all the just one more fourth thing that's all that's ever fourth 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 down at the very bottom after we built our object and stuff comes this line right here And that is all. And that's all that we have to do for the custom. So we go to the bottom of our stuff, paste that line, and we'll take a look at that after. All right, so there, now style should work. Uh, let me just test it out, and then we'll talk about it. I don't even know, like I said, I haven't tried this. F12, so something is busted, broken. A round bracket somewhere on line 56. Seems simple enough left a round bracket in there. Okay. Try it again. Zim style transform is not defined. Okay. So what is the style transform right here? Hmm. That must be a global variable within Zim then. And we can try this, but I bet you it's not going to work. Zim dot set transform. And uh, yeah, I doubt it's there. No. Okay. Why would we put zim dot zim? Zim dot zim. This is global and is working only inside. A global function would have to, oh, would have put on display object if had access to it, right? So this function's used across zim. It would have just been put as a method on the display object itself, except the uh, display object is a create.js class. And, we don't have access to the CreateJS classes. So that sucks. That means style can't be used. OK, let's go find it and fix it so that it can be used then. <laughs> wow, how's this for an extra exploration? 
So we're looking for something called, that we've used that a lot, 62 occurrences of it. That's how many things can get styles. Uh, we want the function called that, function that, no results. So we want that is equal to the function, one result. Okay, so here it is. Okay, yeah. All right, so local variable functions is equal to zim <laughs> dot <laughs> style transform. How about that? <laughs> it's easier. Style transforms. All right, so I think we've just exposed that, but who knows? And it may not have access to that. Yeah, transforms list. <laughs> okay, uh, transform list. Will it or won't it? Well, you know what? We may as well. Oh, this won't do anything. So we may as well try it and see if it works. But it may not have access to the transform list. It just means I need to use uh, we could just call it that on the outside and put it here on the inside for now anyway. Okay, all right, let's try it. Holly, no custom classes. Yep, and yep, 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 yep. Oh, <laughs> okay. So now we go into where we used it down. Nope, not in the docs. I'm scrolling down in the wrong place. Custom classes. Right there. Zim dot style transforms. All right, all this should probably be documented for you guys if you really wanted to use it. Zim dot style transforms is not a function. Oh, come on, it is too. Zim dot style transforms. Zim dot style. Oh, I misspelled it. Transforms. I lost an S. <laughs> Oops. What do we got there? We got nothing. So why do we have nothing? Let's backtrack a little bit. Not that poly, I should just get rid of this poly. Goodbye poly, goodbye line. All right, back here. We've got the style transforms. If style is not equal to false, it's gonna try and transform something. We still haven't looked through this, but I was just wanting to see if it could work because I haven't tried it before. And we've got a group. I don't think we've got any error. Uh, we're checking our DS for points, so well, let's zog what we got here. Zog, well, zog r. This is my new way of just saying, am I somewhere? Uh, after years and years and years of typing this, zog quote here, <laughs> actually after half of those years typing just here and then wondering to myself, Hmm, should we just add a global variable called here <laughs> so that I don't have to put the quotes on that every single time I want to find out if I'm here? Now, of course, you guys who are uh, pros at all this are probably you know, using some sort of debugger where you don't have to do that, but I've just never done the debugger. So anyway, there's my Zog red. Uh, now I don't actually have to type the word here. I can just find out, am I there? And watch what happens. Let's see. Refresh. There it is. So that's like a zog here. <laughs> Good. Well, uh, we're somewhere anyway. And uh, now let's put something in behind here to find out what's coming through. How about let's find out if we have a radius, for instance. Zog radius. And I'll change that color to a green. Refresh. Well, we do have a radius of 100, so that's good as well. 
What about the color? I'm not sure what would cause this not to work. And we got a color. Does that look like red? Who knows? Hopefully you can't hear that. It's asking uh, me to recharge my headset. <laughs> True. Hey, it works. Okay, so that's a good sign. Um, we just asked, is the color coming through red? Now the default color, as you can see here, is gray. That means the color we're receiving must be coming from Uh, this guy right down here. Oh, no, that's a border color. Yeah, from here, from red. So we're, we're actually receiving the style. That's good. What else did we do that might uh, affect this? Did we do something inside here? We got rid of radius sides. Let's put these ones back and see what happens. And just for now, comment out these guys like so. And are we back to the shape? So we're back to the shape. So it's something to do, well, that's good. Something to do with just, just these things. So one of these values is wrong. Let's uh, check them all. Maybe one's undefined or null or something like that. Um, sides, point size. Oh, you know what? If the point size were one, then we have if we have no border, then we wouldn't see a shape. So, right, what are these guys versus these guys? Point size is uh, zero there. They all are zero, three, and red. Oh, crap. <laughs> okay, do you see it? I forgot we had... I, I usually don't pair these things up this way. I'll, I'll do all of the parameters and then all of the assignments separately. Uh, for instance, in the Zim docs here, if you, if you take a look at not the transform list, but um, the custom shapes. No, the polygon. Okay, so here's all our stuff coming in. Then there's all of our assignments after. And in this case, I paired them up. And as I paired them up, I kind of said, hey, I don't usually pair those up. And that's exactly why I don't do that kind of stuff. So anytime you do something different, you, you could run into a bug. Uh, you see what I mean? Like all this stuff. How do I, can I copy these uh, down this way? And did it, did it, did it, did it, did it, and did it, did it, did it, did it, oops, <laughs> there we go. All right, hopefully, you're doing all right out there in the real world, you know, out there in the real world, and uh, not too bugged by all this uh, by getting a little bug here. All right, so there was nothing wrong with what we did there, and we can keep these guys in though. So if we keep these guys in, then we get a red triangle that's still not rotated. Bring back our rotation, save her up, and padoom, padoom. Okay, great. So in the future then, we will expose this guy down here, the Zim style transforms. We may tidy that up a little bit, probably also document it for you so that you can, as you can see here, uh, get styles to work with your own custom classes. So let's uh, review those again. We've, we've passed in three parameters there that are on the ends of all of the Zim uh, display objects that get style. We popped in this code here to, well, we didn't look through this code, so let's just have a peek and see if we can remember it. You know, it's been a while. Anyway, we're handling the group. Uh, we're saying, hey, get the style. So what this does is it goes and grabs any styles that are being applied to this type, this group, inherited, or any general styles that are that are applied like this down below here. So right now we're doing um, 
a general style, we could say uh, type or group here, type it in here, say poly colon gets these styles and throw the red in there like that. So hopefully you've used st Zoom styles before, but if not, here's what they're like. So that's how we would specify poly. If we wanted to specify a specific object, there's no real point putting stuff in style, so we didn't even bother. If you wanted to, you could specify a group of a single name. You know what I mean? I went through the first uh, I don't know, five years of CSS with never using an ID. I always just made a class for it. <laughs> it's no big deal. <laughs> uh, now I, I use IDs. But basically, if you want to use an ID, just put it right here. There it is. There, There's your styles as an ID. <laughs> Ta-da! Or... <laughs> <laughs> Barring that, you're welcome to put it in as an ID, ID or like a comma here. You ready? Uh, check this one out. Comma ID, and take all these things right here, cut them, put them there like that, and then say style dot ID like that. So now um, these styles would be applied in our poly. Or like I said, you could. Uh, um, you could assign them in a group, like so. Group, colon, for instance. Let, well, shall we see if it works? May as well test it. First, we'll get these styles, and the styles are these guys right here. Copy. And get rid of that. Size 3, border color red, border width uh, 5. Okay. And <clears throat> does that look all right? Oh, there's the color red. That's up in a type of poly. We'll get rid of that for now. And in here, though, we would say this is of group first as a quote. First eh, fist. Gee whiz. OK, so there is our poly. and. Our group. Let's change something up though. We'll call this one what color haven't we used in a bit? Orange. Okay, so we save that up and we come back here. And it didn't work. <laughs> All right. Oh, why not? Oh, crap, I've turned on a debugger. Go away, debugger. This is what I think of debuggers. I was like, what? You just opened up like 10 different screens? How do I close this thing? Closing 10 different screens for a debugger. That's what I think of debuggers, just by clicking on this little round guy here. All right, what do we got here? Uh, group is first. Group is first, poly sides. Uh, okay, let's move this up into a type and see if the type works for it. Now, what is that going to give us? Will it matter if it's Zim or not? No, I think because we passed in here, comment out the group for now. I think because we passed in here the, um, uh, there, <laughs> not used to working in the same file that I'm working in. It's <laughs> right down underneath here. I think because we passed in, oh, up here. D. This dot type of poly, probably the style should work on poly. And we refresh here. And it doesn't. Yep, the first general styles worked. Okay. Down, 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 down. Where'd our style go? Let's try it on the general styles here again. Now we did do sides. Oh, I know why. Well, no, I don't know why. I was going to say because we haven't brought those styles in properly. Let's see. Here are the styles we brought in. The uh, And we did not yet bring in the border color and border width. So these guys aren't going to work. And sides. And we haven't brought in sides. All right. Well, that already explained it. We haven't, we haven't brought any of those styles in through the, um, the system here. We've only brought in radius, sides, and point sides. Okay, 
Oh, sorry about that. Which means we may as well put <laughs> these ones back. <laughs> uh, go away, recharge headset. Fifth time. Annoying. And... All right. So let's try it with some styles. A uh, group here. We can say group. Colon first still is fine. But with some styles that we've actually collected. Take our group back here. And uh, that would be something like radius. So we'll uh, try a bigger radius, 150. See if it gets bigger. Color. <laughs> How unlucky. <laughs> Color orange and point size. Point size. We'll go with a point size of zero. All right, so now we're trying to apply these styles to our group of first and see what we get. Uh, reference error first is not defined. Quote first. There we go. So uh, sides are three. How about a sides of six? Excellent. Nice, huh? So that's how we would apply something similar to a class. We didn't use the word class because we already use classes when we're coding. <laughs> so <laughs> we called them groups. Let's try out the type here. And how about, um, we'll pull, pull up a few of these. How about the radius? We'll say all polygons will have a radius of not 150, but of just mm, 30, a little puny one. And they will, uh, we could override it there. Let's try that for later. Actually, let's pull the color out of there too. And make it a color of purple. Okay, so now this is saying all polygons should have a radius of 30 and a color of purple. But the ones that are grouped as first will have a point size of ooh, 10. Let's see what happens. So it's smaller. The, I, I don't know if the point size worked or not. Uh, how do we tell? Oh, closed path. Somebody forgot a closed path somewhere in that polygon. Interesting that somebody would be create just. Do you see how I was just noticing the very tip of that one right there in the front there? That tip. Well, let's make it bigger and see if we can. See that? So we'll override first with a bigger radius. So this should override the general small radius. And it does. Oh, good. It's not too much of a tip issue. You see how the little tip there is broken? The other tips aren't? Closed path would, would fix that. So when the polygon was made, a CP on that would help. I wonder if I can... I don't think I can close a path on a polygon or on... Oh. Uh, working in the same file again, closing the path, making making the shape. There's the shape. Add to that D and dot close the path. So that's how you close a path. And let's see what happens. No, it didn't happen. Yeah, so it's got probably after it draws the polygon, I think internally in CreateJS, it goes to a different path. We'll have to mention that or fix that up in CreateJS uh, to make sure that that little tip gets added there. Okay, so I'll get rid of that. Good, so that style's working. All right. In this explore, then, we've had a look at a few different things. We've seen how to bring in Zim Duo, which is really exciting to get our uh, 
our uh, configuration objects working. We've seen how to bring in styles and how to collect the styles there. I am Dr. Abstract. Have a, have a, have a great day. Oh, I just realized um, <laughs> I'm supposed to be showing you this special one here. There we go. <laughs> In, uh, in this Zim Explorer, oh, yes. we have uh, taken a look at how to uh, further customize our classes. Have a great day. Ciao.